does chlorine kill COVID-19? Anybody want to tackle that one? Gosh, this seems like an early March question when we were <laughs> figuring I, out how to buy cleaning supplies. I know, I know. Um, so I've, I've been working with my community pool extensively, so I'll tackle this one. I think the implication here is, is the pool okay, right? Right. Um, there is no evidence at all that uh, you can get COVID-19 through the water in a chlorinated pool. It's not really waterborne, and it's also not really foodborne. We've seen, we've seen essentially um, very limited evidence of anyone getting sick by eating something that was contaminated. Nor mosquito-borne. Um, We've gotten that question a lot. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I haven't seen that one. How interesting. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, and no pet to human transmission, right? (laughs) No pet to human transmission. Although that literature seems to be evolving. Maybe we can come back to that. Although human to pet, I think we're seeing. Yes. Yeah. So, human to pet, we are starting to see some evidence. And I want to return to that because I want to return to this idea of uncertainty and, and how much we still don't really don't know. But answer the pool um, question. We all pool. care about this That's one. <laughs> we all care about the pool. And so I'm going to answer the pool question. Um, so no, uh, you're not going to get COVID-19 through the water swimming in your pool um, in all likelihood. It would be very unusual circumstances for that to happen. But it is transmitted um, through the air. And doing activities that make you breathe hard will increase the risk of droplet transmission. And so exercising Uh, in a pool or in a gym or elsewhere will make you breathe harder. And so doing a group activity in the pool is questionable because, you know, you don't breathe underwater, you breathe in the air. Or Um, shouting or saying, hey, Yeah, so some of of those high risk activities (laughs) where we've seen super spreader events have been um, exercise, singing, shouting. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of shouting, it turns out, is one of the reasons that we've had so much disease in the meatpacking industry is because it's very noisy environment and and the employees are shouting all the time to communicate. And nightclubs. Um, Nightclubs um, (laughs) where it's also very noisy and so people are yelling and they're very close together. So I do think that the pools, um, the pool itself is not the problem. It's that you need to be careful in the activities that you're engaging in at the pool and you need to be physically distanced from mm-hmm. people outside your household while you're at the pool. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the answer to the pool question. And I think we can think of the challenges of lifeguards in those situations and yeah. the challenges of you know, enforcing those kind of distancing rules. Right. In Wisconsin, um, and the CDC has also recommended that uh, there be a a uh, social distancing monitor who is not the lifeguard in order to not distract the lifeguard from what yeah. it is that they're doing. And it's so, a great guideline. Yeah, that's, I think that's a smart guideline.